Today, the Texas Medical Board adopted guidance for how doctors should interpret the state's new abortion laws. This came in response to concerns raised by doctors, lawyers, and those who say they were denied medically necessary abortions. Here to break down more on the board's decision is Eleanor Klybanoff. She is the women's health reporter for the Texas Tribune. And Eleanor, we are very glad to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. You know, you have covered this issue so extensively, so we're very grateful that you're here to break down some of this. But I would hope that you can quickly remind us how we got to this meeting today and what the Texas Medical Board was supposed to be considering. Right. The Texas Medical Board has been asked repeatedly over the last two years to help doctors figure out how to interpret interpret these new laws. And only recently in March did they issue this initial proposal for this guidance. And doctors and lawyers were not thrilled with the original proposal. They had a lot of feedback over the last couple of months. And today was sort of uh, the next step, which is when the board um, took up all that feedback, offered how they were going to pivot some of this and tweak some of this guidance and take a vote on it. The decision that came today has a lot of different caveats within it, but I'm wondering if you could just maybe highlight what the most notable revision the board gave for doctors here in Texas. Right. One of the big concerns from doctors and lawyers was that this guidance listed a lot of documentation that they were expected to produce after performing a medically necessary abortion. And many of the doctors worried that the way it was originally written, they would have been required to do that documentation before performing the abortion, even when, say, dealing with an extremely urgent medical situation. So this new guidance specifies that they should fill out all this documentation within seven days of performing the abortion. And it removes one of the most controversial provisions, which encouraged doctors to transfer patients uh, to another hospital to avoid performing an abortion, which doctors said, you know, might uh, endanger patients facing a medical emergency. Now, something that the board did not do today was to provide a list of cases in which an abortion would be legal. What's the reaction to that lack of clarification today? You know, I think a lot of doctors and advocates realize that it is pretty hard to come up with a conclusive list of all the times a doctor can act. You know, their argument is that it's impossible to put these things in uh, a list, just as it's very hard to put them into law. And the doctor should sort of just be trusted to do their jobs without this threat of, you know, extremely intense criminal penalties hanging over their head. Um, so I think largely people agree with not creating a list of, uh, you know, times a doctor can perform an abortion. But I think that the request for a list came from the sense that people just want more guidance. And while this is seen as a good first step, I think a lot of confusion remains from what I'm hearing. Eleanor Klybanoff with the Texas Tribune. Uh, we appreciate your reporting. We'll look forward to that in the future because there is so much more to unravel from this. So we appreciate it again. Thank you. Thank you.